sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Yes. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the loop and the harp. Praise him with the timbre and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Praise him upon all the cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. 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 Y'all, my Bible is reading a different way. I got a different Bible and I don't like it. But to God be the glory, we're going to praise God anyhow. Amen. Father God, we come to you humble as I know how. God, Hallelujah. thank you for this day that you let us see that we've never seen before. Now, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will show yourself strong in this house. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will yes. witness it, uh, your mercy, mercy in this house, God. Lord yes. God, bless our pastor on today. Save, I mean, deliver, Lord God, save and set free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. we pray. Amen. 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 Let us go before the Lord in worship. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I'm going to sing that again. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Lift up your voice and sing. Sing it again. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. And Omega. And Omega. We worship. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to With an open heart, say, we give you all. We give you all the glory. Come on, sing it again. We give you all. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. One more time. From the bottom of my heart, we give you all. We give you all the glory. We give you all. We give you all the Come on, 
on, come on and give him worship. Give him glory and honor for another day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank him for life, help, and strength. We give you the glory, Hallelujah. Lord, for there is none greater Hallelujah. than you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are our protector, Hallelujah. Lord, from yeah. seen Hallelujah. and unseen danger. You, and for that, we Thank give you the glory, glory Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that you have Thank made. You, we rejoice. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be glad therein. Have your way in this place. Glory, God. Ah, oh, yes, Lord. Come on and give him glory. He's worthy. can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Lord, tell me what can I do? For I can live without you. I can live without you. Lord, tell me what can I do? For I can live without you. No, I can't live Without you, Lord, tell me what can I do, Lord? I can live without you. I can live without you. Here's my heart. Here's my mind. Lord, I give you my soul. I need you to take control. For I've tried. Yes, I've tried it on my own. But all I found is I can make it on my own, on my own. I can make it, I can make it on my own, on my own. I can make it, I can make it. Tell me, tell me. What can I do? I can live. I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me. Tell me what can I do? Oh, Lord, Lord. I can live without you. I can live without you. Lord, here's my heart. Here's my mind, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. I need you to take control. Yes, I've tried it on my own, but all I found is I can make it on my own, on my own. I can make it, I can make it on my own. You tell him, I 
Tell me what can I do, Lord? I can breathe or breathe or breathe without you. Oh, tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live. Come on, help me say. Tell me what I can I do? Come on, tell them I can live. I can live without you. I can live without you. Oh, tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I realize that I can't make it without the Lord. He is my life, my health, my strength. Hallelujah. He is the core of my existence. Without him, hallelujah, I would perish. Hallelujah. So when I feel the spirit of the Lord, I have to raise up my voice and give him the glory, the honor, and praise. For I feel the spirit of the Lord in the house today. So whatever you need, hallelujah, turn it over into a praise to him and exalt, hallelujah, for your blessing. I feel the spirit all over me. I feel your spirit all over me. It's in my hands in my soul, down in my feet. Oh, I feel your spirit all over me. Help me sing it. I feel, I feel your spirit all over me. Oh, yes. I feel your spirit all over me. It's in my hands in my soul.
sickness. I feel them moving. It's got to move. I feel them moving. Your deliverance. I feel them moving. It's on the move. I feel them moving. Amen and amen. Come on, y'all. Let's bless God in his house. How many know that God is always moving? How many feel God moving? Hallelujah. To God be the glory, God. You are worthy to be praised. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's bless God. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but somebody didn't wake up on yesterday. Somebody didn't wake up on this morning. But God saw fit to let us see another day. I don't know about y'all, but I may be tired in my body, but I'm never too tired to praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, God. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Now, at this time, I want you to stretch forth your hand toward our pastor and say, God bless. God use your anointed vessel. Pastor Davison, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. Let's give him a hand as he come forth. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. I feel the spirit all over me. Amen. Amen. Woo, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God a great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ain't he, ain't he good? And all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 Y'all can go ahead on and, and have your seats. Amen. It's a blessing. To be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 I don't know what I'm going to do today. I could say let's just go on back home. <laughs> but we're here now. <laughs> so we might as well stay. Amen. 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 This is uh, the second Sunday. Amen. We just thank God for being here today. Amen. Let's give him a hand, let's give him a, a God a hand clap of praise just for just for letting us have some space in the building. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just like uh, Minister Long was saying, somebody didn't wake up. Amen. I don't know how many around here, but probably nationwide, somewhere around a thousand of them didn't wake up this morning. Amen. That's something, ain't it? A thousand people a day. And people still saying it's a hoax. <laughs> it ain't real. Hallelujah. You know what? God is good anyway. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's give a praise team a, a, a hand clap of praise. Now let's give the musicians a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's give God another hand clap of praise. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. You're so worthy, God, you're so worthy. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. 
Amen. Amen. As we were saying, um, this is the second Sunday, so uh, we're going to get ready and ask Sister Lisa and the Revelators to come and surrender a selection. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanking God for family. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so good. Amen. He is so good. How many know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God how we had a good time on practice on Friday, hallelujah, God is so good, so good, hallelujah, I can't bless him enough, I can't praise him enough, thanking him for me being in my right mind on this morning, hallelujah, I was able to dress myself this morning, I counted a blessing, hallelujah, God, I thank you, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, there's beauty in my brokenness, I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Cause God gives me joy down deep in my soul. Yeah. Down deep in my soul. Oh, yeah. Down deep in my soul. Oh, you, you give, give me joy. joy down deep in my soul. Yeah. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though he's captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Cause God gives me joy. joy down deep in my soul. In my down soul. Down deep in my soul. Yeah. Down deep in my soul. Oh. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Cause God gives me joy. Down deep in my soul. In my soul. Down deep in my soul. Yeah. Hallelujah for the 
joy. Glory, thank you for the joy. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Deep in my soul. Hallelujah. True happiness. When, when you got joy deep down in your soul. Amen. It ain't easy for the devil to come and steal it away. When you got joy down deep in your soul, you might go through trials and tribulations. But you still got joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got that peace that goes beyond understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. That's that kind of joy people can't take away from you. We used to sing a song, said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. That joy deep down in your soul. Amen. When, when, you, when, they, when you say, I really love the Lord. You really love the Lord. It ain't, it's not a, y'all can go ahead on and sit down. But it's not an on the surface thing. It ain't a because of this or because of that. But it's because I love him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I truly love the Lord. Give me joy deep down in my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the revelators another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. It's just a pleasure to, a joy to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. I don't think I gave a welcome. I guess I was just happy to be here. <laughs> but uh, we want to welcome everybody to Free Will Family Worship Center this morning. Amen. I realize it's not the best of days, but we got to take them as they come. Amen. It's like we used to say, if you didn't have a little rain in your life, you wouldn't be able to appreciate the sunshine. Amen. So we're going to go on into the word. I ain't going to play around. We're going to get with it, hit it, and quit it. <laughs> I'm old school, y'all. I'm an old man, y'all, y'all. I like old stuff. I, I, do, I do my thing. Um, those of you that have your Bibles or some form of it, uh, we're going to, our scripture this morning is going to be 
in the 13th chapter of Genesis. 13th chapter of Genesis. And we'll be starting at the fifth verse. And so while y'all are going there, I'm going to go ahead on and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for bringing us together this morning. And God, I give you the glory and I give you the honor for all things. And Lord, as we prepare to go into the word, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would forgive us or forgive me of any sins that I've committed, sins known or unknown. Lord, that I might stand before you a clean vessel and before these people a clean vessel. And Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, I pray for the wisdom of this word, understanding of this word, knowledge of this word, so that, Lord, we speak with clarity and understanding. And so, God, I just give you the glory and the honor, and I believe that you have prepared the hearts to receive this word today. And so, Lord, I thank you, and I love you, and I give you the glory and the honor for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, as, you, as you know, um, we've been, are, are going to be on making choices all this month. For me, anyway. I don't know what Minister Long going to do. Well, I'll be talking about choice. By the time I get there, get through next week, y'all probably going to be tired of it. So she's going to have to come up with something else. <laughs> Amen. But, but our choices have so much bearing on our lives that we have to stop at some point and look at it and realize that we're not just trotting through this lane or this time or through this life. You know what I mean? It, we, we're not just, you know, haphazardly uh, going through and everything that we do affects us, you know? I put it like this, if, if I were a young man, I'd make different choices. But you know what they say about hindsight? That's 2020. You can see it perfectly. You never know what the future holds. But you make choices based on how you want the future to go. Amen. But sometimes we don't look at it that way. We, we don't make our choices. You know what? I want to stop right here. Right here. I forgot about something. Are y'all supposed to be doing the breast cancer thing? Hmm? Okay, next one. Okay. I didn't, I meant to, I didn't mean to omit you. I stop. I stop and we'll start over. Let them do their thing. <laughs> Amen. I ain't got started yet. Let me kick the kick this thing a couple of times. We might be ready to go. But our our choices, our choices play a big part in our lives. And one of the reasons the theme is choices because at the beginning of the next month we're gonna be making a choice. But that's just for one day. That's just a choice for that day. We, we got choices that, that, that we'll be making that'll affect us far more than four years. You know what I mean? And so it's the, 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 the decisions that we make and the reasons we make them, very important in our lives. I guarantee you, I guarantee you there's not a person in here that 
if, if, if it were possible that we could go back and make a different choice at a certain, of certain things, we would. Amen. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture that we're going to go. We're going to be reading from uh, Genesis chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 5. And we're going to read down to the end of the, the chapter. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. Actually, we're going to go beyond those verses. But these are the main verses that pertain to our lesson today our message, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, starting at verse 5, Genesis chapter 5, I mean chapter 13, verse 5. And Lot also, <clears throat> and just like last week, one of the reasons, the reason why we picked this particular text is because of the choices that was made. Amen? Amen. Y'all y'all alive? Amen. God, do I need to pull out something just to wake you up? <laughs> Bam! Just to shoot. <laughs> That'll get you. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm, I might, might do that one Sunday. Just lay it up here and say, everybody pay attention. <laughs> or else. <laughs> Next thing you know, it'd be blue lights out there in the parking lot. <laughs> so we're going to start at verse 5. Uh, and Lot also which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. Verse 7. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Amen. I want to stop right there, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm try to get y'all out of here today. Amen. 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 Y'all set the time. Y'all tell God what time you want to get out. He'll do it. <laughs> If, if, if it's reasonable, now he ain't going to do nothing unreasonable. <laughs> All right. And Abram, wait a minute, let me go back to verse 5. Wait a minute. All right, I'm looking on the wrong page here. Nine, okay. Is there not the whole, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroy, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zoar. Now, I wanna, do want to stop right here and just say, now, they 
Abraham and Lot had been in Egypt. And uh, they had, that's where they got a lot of the riches at, their cattle and all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's where they made their money, if you would put it in the day's terms. And so when, when they, uh, Lot looked out there and he saw all that, it, re it reminded them of where they came from because they was out, out like in the uh, dry place. You know what I mean? And so that's why they was fighting over water and stuff. And so he looked over there and saw all this green pasture. We're going to, that's a point to come back to. In verse 11, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves like, uh, not like, but the one from the other. Verse uh, 12, Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Now, I want to say something else right quick just about this uh, verse here. It said the men of Sodom were sinners exceedingly before the Lord. Well, the people in Canaan was bad, too. It's just like anything anywhere else. The world wasn't different. It was just in that time. It was just ancient times. The sin everywhere you go. And I, I just want to say this, just in case somebody had to go. You don't have to sin just because everybody else is sinning. Amen. Amen. That's a choice you don't have to make. That's what really gets a lot of us, especially when we're young people. Everybody else is doing it. I, I thank God that he pulled me out of the world. And I've said this a hundred times probably, and I'll, if the Lord let me live, I'll say it a, another hundred times. I thank God that he pulled me out of the world. When he did, because I, I used that same reasoning. Everybody else is doing it. You know, if, if I'd have still been out there, I'd have been doing what everybody else was doing. And then the next thing you know, you may not have a Pastor Davidson. You might have that old crackhead laying over there. Amen. Somebody that can't, don't, not can't, but don't want, don't have any ambition to do anything for God. Don't even care. Why? Well, only thing, really, I'm going I'm to say this, and this is just from, from me. I don't know because I ain't never been on crack, but I done been around people. The main thing for them is to get another hit. Amen. I could have been like that, but I thank God. God. God said, I got something for you to do, boy. And it's about time you be about my business. And so he pulled me out, and I thank God that he did. Amen. Amen. I give God a hand clap of praise for that. I ain't worried about y'all because this is me. Amen. And even, uh, you know, even to this day, even to this day, I'm still surprised. I, don't, I don't, can't get over it. As much as, as I believe that, that when I look back and I believe that God used to talk to me before I got saved, I believe that God used to shield and protect me before I got saved. I'm, I'm, this is hindsight. I'm looking back and seeing all the things that happened in my life. But even to this day, even with all of that, I'm still surprised that I turned out to be a preacher. And then on top of that, he made me a pastor. You know, so that's, I mean, it was just all God. 
And, and see, that was a choice. I had a choice. I could have rejected it because he wouldn't have never forced me to do this. Amen. But I thank God that he chose me, and I, and I accept it. I thank, I thank him for it. Amen. Because I, I, I don't know where I would have been. Life would have been totally different. I mean, you know what, and I'm, I'm trying to get back to my scripture, but even, let me, let me show you something. Even had I not did what I thought, you know what I mean? I was just like, like I always say, a good thing I got out of the service when I did, because if I had stayed much longer, I probably would have been an alcoholic, because that's all we did. But even if none of that stuff that I think would have happened had happened and I had been successful, the choices still would have made my life totally different than what it is now. Now, I, I might have been a, a successful football coach, which is what I would have wanted to be. But if it's not what God wanted, what good would it have been? I probably could have still been on my way to hell. Amen, people. Amen. Why? Because sometimes, sometimes we put what we like first and then do the right thing second. Paul said, what I would do I don't, but that what I I would not do that I do. I know he's kind of confusing. In other words, he was saying the thing that I shouldn't be doing, that's what I be doing. And the thing that I should not be that that I should be doing, that's what I don't want to do. Because that's not our nature. Our nature is to sin. And that's what we want to do. We want to go and and do it. You know what? Let me show you something. You do things responsibly. There's nothing wrong with having a party. There's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just when you start doing these things in excess, that's where, that's where the problem comes in because then you get to get to a point to where you can't handle things. Things begin to overtake your life. It be, becomes more important to do these things than to serve God. Amen. Amen. I know that really wasn't part of my message. You wondering how I got over there? I'm wondering. But it was God. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. So now, we, we just finished talking about uh, those people in Canaan. No, I mean, not Canaan, but Sodom and Gomorrah. So we're going to go down to 14. It says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward. Let me, let me read that again. I didn't express that right because I want you to get the point. It said, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, he said, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it to, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. I want to I say something because, because I may not say it later. We may not get to this. But God was trying to encourage Abraham right here. Because he, he had allowed Lot to take the pasture, the green, prosperous looking land. And he was, took the dust. And I was, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get into why that's important. But he took the dirty, dusty land. And God was saying, he said, look at, the, look at all this dust. 
He said, I'm going to give it all to you, and I'm going to make your people as the dust of the earth. He said, now, can you number anybody? Can anybody number the dust particles? He said, if you can number the dust particles, you'll be able to number your people. But if you can't, then you won't be able to. They'll be innumerable. In other words, he was, he was telling Abraham, don't worry about where you wound up. Don't worry about what you got. Just, just, just stay with me. Verse 16, he said, I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 17 said, Arise. Walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. I want you to remember that. He built there an altar unto the Lord. Now we're going to go back and we're going to talk about this thing and we're going to talk about uh, our uh, message of choices. Um, let me read my introduction. I don't got to where I like to write, write down the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it's not long, but it, it makes the point. It's not, now, I want you to pay attention. <laughs> I want y'all to think for a moment about life and about the hundreds and possibly thousands of choices that you've made over the years. Some were important choices. Others didn't matter so much. But then there are some choices that we think didn't really matter or we didn't think much about them at the time, but it eventually had a big impact on your life. Some people have made some choices that will probably go to the grave with them. They be thinking, I ain't never going to tell nobody this. <laughs> I ain't even going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you have lived long enough, you done made one of them choices. <laughs> I ain't telling nobody. <laughs> nope. They'll never hear this. <laughs> See, that's why you ain't got, you shouldn't be doing everything with people all the time. Because if you got one of them kind of secrets and you did it with somebody, you ain't the only one that know. <laughs> They're going to spill the beans sooner or later. Amen. Especially if they ain't saved. They been out there and they got the tooting a little bit. Just talking. They be like, man, let me tell you this. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> hey, man, it's about like, uh, about like uh, this uh, joke I heard a long time ago about these preachers. These three preachers went fishing. And they was out on the lake. Or nobody out there but them. And so one of them, while they was out there, they, one of them said, fellas, I can't help it. I, I got to confess. He said, uh, I got a drinking problem. He said, I, I don't know why I do it all the time. I know I know better, but I just can't help it. And then you know how, how when one do something, everybody else do it. So the other... 
other uh, next preacher said, well, since we confessing, <laughs> said, I got a problem with women. And I, and I love my wife, but man, I just can't help it. These women just be driving me crazy. And the other preacher standing in the boat, he said, well, fellas, I'm going to tell y'all something. I got a problem with talking too much, and I can't wait to get back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, some of, some of our choices is going to go with us to the grave. But life is full of choices. So I want you to think for a moment about a choice that you made that you would never forget. We got some of them too. Amen. And how much of an impact it has had on your life. And then that will show you how important it is to be thoughtful when we make our choices. Think about that one choice. I'm just, I'm just wanting you to pick one. Some of us got plenty of choices like that. But I just want you to pick one choice that you made that, and, and other than salvation. Because that's the, that to me, that's the biggest choice. I don't care what, what you know, anything else came up in our life. When we made the choice, the choice to get saved and stay saved. That's, to me, that was the biggest choice. But I want you to think about it. That one choice that you made and how it impacted your life. Amen. Just think about it. And that'll, that'll, that'll give you some perspective on where you are. Amen. Now, as we go back to the scripture, both Abraham and Lot had acquired much wealth, so much so that they could no longer live together. So now it's time to make a choice. Now, before we go into making this choice, I want to say something about the, the situation they was in. You know, we often think that if I just had more money, and let's just go back to number five right quick, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It said, so Lot also, which were, went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. And in verse 6 said, the, Lord, the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. So they had both gotten rich. And we, we as I was saying, we often think about if I just had some more money, I wouldn't be worried about certain things. And we sometimes um, think that money is the end all. If Money will take care of everything. But in this case, money is what caused the problem. They had gotten so much. God had prospered them. But let me, I want to I wanna tell you, this was, this was for your benefit. How many of us believed in God so much that God knew that this was going to be a problem and that this was going to be something that somebody was preaching about 5,000 years later. God knew this. It wasn't quite 5,000, but it was close. So this was for your benefit. And God seen this situation and they had to make choices about it. And like I was saying, the, 
The money was the reason. Because, see, we all think that more money, more money. That the Williams, the Williams brothers, more money, more money. Always is, is, is the answer. We just throw more money at it. And a lot of times it just takes some human effort. But we just want to put money into it. You remember Jesus said, what Jesus said about when the rich young ruler left him. You remember the rich young ruler said, Lord, uh, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, obey the commandments. Just paraphrase. He said, obey the commandments. And he said, I done done all that. What else? He said, oh, you want to make it hard, huh? See, Jesus, Jesus wants things to be so easy even a child can understand. But he said, that can't be that. That because I've already done that. He said, what else can I do? I want, you to, I want you to understand that Jesus don't want it to be difficult for you to get saved. Jesus don't want it to be hard for you to make a decision for him. But the rich young ruler said, well, what else can I do? I've already done that. And the point I like to make about this part is, I want you to understand he was a rich young ruler. And he had already been obedient. So what that's telling you, through obedience, God will bless you. Amen. And then Jesus told him, he said, all right, sell everything you got, come and follow me. He said, whoa. I didn't want it to be that hard. And so the rich young ruler turned his back and left. And then Jesus said how hard it is for people with riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, so money ain't the answer to everything. Money, that's the one thing money can't get you is into heaven. So often we, we look at success, and people got different ideas of what success is, but success ain't what's going to get you into heaven. Loving God is what's going to get you into heaven. Amen? Amen. And so the first point that we want to make is that Choices often result in eternally significant consequences. In other words, some of the choices that we make stay with us for the rest of our lives. Some of the choices that we make dog us every day. Some of the choices that we make, we just can't get away from it. You know how I don't mean to put it out there like this, but I'm going to say it like this because this is the way I am. And it's not one way or other with men or women, but you know how sometimes you got a friend. I'll put it that way. You got a friend and something happened between you and your friend. And then every time, I don't care how long y'all be friends, Every time something happened, that rascal would say, you remember when you did this? <laughs> or you remember when you did that? And you want to slap him or her in the mouth. <laughs> and say, you know what, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but you did it, and they won't let you forget it. And that's the way some of our choices are. Some of our choices dog us for all of our lives. And we just can't get away from them. And so this was one of those choices that Abraham and Lot had to make. They had both gotten rich. 
And so, so much so that the land wasn't big enough for the both of them. That sounds like a western, don't it? This town ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> one of us got to go one way or the other. And so Abraham, let me, let me show you something. Abraham looked at Lot, and he said, look, man. He said, I love you. You're my nephew. He said, but we got so much, man, and this, this land can't, can't bear both of us, much less the people that already live here. We, we are... Uh, invading on their property too. He said, so you make the choice. And this marked the beginning of a sad life for Lot. For Lot looked up and he saw, looked around and he saw all the plain of Jordan. And it reminded him of where he got rich at over in Egypt. And so he said, in his mind, I'm believing he was thinking, if I go over here, I'm going to be prosperous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have something. And I'm going to be somebody. Let me show you something. Do you remember a minute ago, a few minutes ago, when I was saying even if none of those things had happened in my life and, and I turned out to be successful at something, that my life would still be totally different? But this, this was the situation with, with Lot. The Bible says Lot looked over there and he saw the, that it was well watered. I guess, and he, he, he says, you know what, I can prosper, I can grow, and I can be somebody. And Abraham said, I'm going to give you the choice. He said, well, you pick wherever you want to go. And you go one way, and I'll go the other. And so Lot chose to the green grass. And I know it ain't nothing but a few of us in here, but there used to be a song that said, don't let the green grass fool you. A lot let the green grass fool him. And that's what a lot of us do when we make choices. It looks like things are a whole lot better somewhere else. That's, that's why a lot of people leave church, leave one church and go to another church. It look, it look a whole lot better over there. Let me tell you something. A lot of times people are, 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 are go to a special program and they go in a church and they see all of these people and they see the, the, the great musicians and the, the great singers and the great speakers, and they were like, I'd like to go to this church. Don't know that those people were invited. Amen. And then they make the decision to leave their church and go to the happy church or go to the big, glorious-looking church. And then they get there, and it ain't glorious no more. Why? Because all the guests is gone. So Abraham Lot was looking at the green grass. And that was the beginning of his downfall. I told y'all, the, the Bible tells us that these people over there were exceedingly wicked. The men were. Well, Lot went there where they were exceedingly wicked. Abram said, okay, I'll take the mountains. I'll take the dust wherever. You know why? Because Abraham was trusting God 
And Lot was trusting in riches. We got we to learn how to trust God. And when we trust God, then things are going to turn out regardless of what they look like in the, at first. Things are going to turn out all right. Now, I ain't saying you're going to wind up being a multi-millionaire. Now, I ain't saying that at all. But I am saying that your life will be okay. David said, I've, I'm, I've been young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God it will take care of you. You will have what you need. I'm not saying you, you're going to be having overabundance, but look at what happened to them. Look at the rich young ruler. If you will be obedient, well, you can eat the good of the land. What did what, what it say in Isaiah? It said, if you, you be obedient, when it said, come down, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if not, then you're going to suffer the consequences. Be obedient. I'm going to show you what obedience gets you. Now, I didn't look this up, so I ain't got the scripture and I'm not going to ask y'all to look it up if you want to know. Look it up for yourself and find it. But I'm going to tell you what obedience will get you. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. And through his obedience, God lifted him up and gave him a name. That was above every other name. You want recognition? You want power? You want the respect of people? Then you need to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. I mean, that's what obedience will get you. Amen. But Lot looked over there and he saw all of this. And so he decided, I'm going to go this way. Abraham said, well, you go that way and I'll go this way. And that was that. And that was a, a simple choice, but he never thought that it was going to end the way it did. And I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. Because I thought I'd be through by now. Y'all need to thank God. <laughs> Amen. But they made this choice. So the next, the next thing that we need to, we want to look at is we must choose in line with God's principles. We, we must base our choices on God's word. Amen. Remember when Jesus said, what good is it if a man gain the whole world and lose his soul? Lot thought that he was going to prosper over there. He went down there. And, the, and at first, let me show you. Let me just show you something here. Like I said, I'm going to skip some stuff. But I want to show you something. He went down there to move the tent to the plain where all the green grass was. And the, as I said, Abraham stayed up in the mountains. And Lot purposely went over there because he thought he would prosper. He saw prosperity. How many of us wouldn't? How many of us wouldn't? You know what I mean? You see all this green grass. You see all this water. How many of us wouldn't think that I would be prosperous? I'm already, I've already got some stuff. All I need to do is increase what I have. So Lot went over there, and he started out. He pitched his tent. He was close to the city. He didn't go there. 
but he was close. Like I said, I'm going to skip some stuff. Then later on, we find out that Lot done moved all the way into the city. He done ditched his tent, and he got an apartment in there. Amen. And then we find out that Lot done got so big in the city that he's on the city council. He's sitting at the gate with the elders now. <laughs> what that tell you? Now, I want you to understand something. Remember it said these men were what? Exceedingly wicked. Do you think that he went over there being godly and, and prospered in a wicked place? No. He went down there and did the same thing they did. And they like, he liked it and they liked it. So he wind up living in the, in the place, on the city council, making decisions. But Abraham, on the other hand, stayed up in the mountains. And the Bible tells us that he went and dwelt, dwelt in Hebron, plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And he did what? What was that last thing he did? He built an altar unto the Lord. Amen. So, what I'm saying here about this part is, it's like Jesus said, you can gain the world and lose your soul. Lot went down there and he prospered. But he lost a lot. We'll find out if you read in the next chapter, we'll find out that, that Lot got taken away. And some kings and had come. And overran Sodom and Gomorrah and, and captured the people. And Abraham had to take his little army and go get them back. That's one of the consequences of making bad choices. Next thing. We need to make choices which value relationships. Let me show you something here. Let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and Thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Abraham didn't think about the prosperity. Abraham wasn't thinking about what all it's going to be for me, what all I can do. But Abraham says, Let, let's, let's, not be, let's not have nothing between us. There ain't, ain't, ain't no need to uh, arguing between each other. Why? Because we are brethren. And, and it seems here that we can't live together, so, so let's separate so where we both got some room to grow. Abraham's grew naturally. Amen. See, that's the way things do. Abraham's oxen or whatever, cows had cows and bulls had. No, the bulls didn't have that. <laughs> but the goats had goats and the sheep had sheep. You know what I'm saying? Abraham's grew naturally. But Lot went down there trying to be some big, be the big man. And like I said, we read in the next chapter, we find out he got captured and taken away and and guess who had to go rescue him? Abraham had to go get him. And by the way, 
I'm not going to dwell on it, but this was the first time people paid tithes. Abraham pray, paid tithes to the king of Salem. He took the, he said, get a, get a young man some stuff, and you keep the rest. He said, I don't want, he said, I don't, I don't, this is what, this was Abraham's thought. He said, I don't want nobody saying that they made Abraham rich. He said, I got mine from the Lord. Amen. So Abraham, amen, loved the Lord, and Abraham did what was right in the sight of God. Like I said, Lot went down there and joined in. Abraham stayed in the mountain and built an altar unto God. See, that was a choice. Let me go to the next point. We need to make choices which value godliness. We need to make choices which value godliness. Abraham had already chosen God. When it came down to whether they should, which way they was going to go, which way they was going to stay, Abraham had already chosen God. How do you know? Because Abraham, God had come to Abraham years before in the Ur of the Chaldees. And he said, Abraham, I want you to get out from among your people. And, I, and I, out from among all these old idol gods. He said, and I want you to let me be your guide, and I'll show you to a place that I'm going to give to you and your prosperity forever. So Abraham had already chosen God. And so when it came down to this point to where they could no longer live together, this was what's interesting about it. Abraham already owned the land in, in faith. Abraham could have just said, I'm the oldest, you my nephew, you my brother's son. I'll do this or I'll go this way and you go a certain way. But because Abraham valued God's principles and he didn't want any strife. Abraham said, I tell you what, I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm tell you, people, that's hard for some people to, 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 to let things go. You know what I mean? Some people are going to hold on to stuff. But Abraham said, I'm going to be the bigger man. He said, we brethren, ain't no need of us arguing and having no problem here. Even though God had promised this land to me, he said, you make the choice, and you do what you want, and I'll take the other way. When Abraham could have ordered him to go where he wanted him to go. But Abraham loved what God valued. And, they, and God, the, 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 the Bible tells us what? He says, do things that make for peace. Amen. He said, Live peaceably with your neighbors as much as possible. Amen. And so Abraham said, even in, in his mind, he knew he, it, was, it was his right. He, he, it was his right to choose what he wanted. And I believe if Abraham had gone over there, Abraham still would have been okay. He wouldn't, because I don't believe he would have joined in with the with the Sodomites. Why? Because when Abraham went to the mountain, the Bible tells us that Abraham built an altar unto God. Abraham was going to live right one way or another. But Lot was the one that went running down there trying to be a big man, doing everything that they wanted to do. He the one that didn't live by godly principles. Amen. This last thing, then we're going to go ahead on and close out. Say, we must make choices 
which value fellowship with God. Lot chose Sodom and blended with them. We should make choices, choices which value God's eternal promises. As we, as believers, we are to live by faith in the promises of God. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, my, one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> Brother Parks used to get on me and say, I believe every one of your favorite scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in Matthew 6 and 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things to be added on. So we need to value God's promises. That is why when Lot chose the plain, Abraham chose the, the he, he went in the, in the opposite direction. Why? Because he was moving in faith. What does the Bible tell us? We, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so Lot was walking by sight. And Abraham was walking in faith. And he went over there even though the, the prospects didn't look too good. He went over there in the mountains and, and he humbled himself down. He set his tent down and, and he went over there and and he built an altar to the Lord. Now I want us to look at verse 14 again. And see, as I was studying this, one of the commentators was saying, Abraham was probably wondering to himself, did I make the right choice? You see, but Abraham stood with the Lord. And so Abraham said, did I make the right choice? And in verse 14, while he was over there in the mountain, he, the Lord said unto Abram, after Lot had separated from him, he said, now lift up your eyes. You see, Abraham was wondering, am I right or am I wrong? Lot then took all this beautiful land, well watered and everything, and God wanted to encourage Abraham. He said, now lift up your eyes and look to the north, east, south, and west. And he said, all the land that you see, I'm going to give it to you and your prosperity. Prosperity. Amen. See, that's, that's walking by faith. That's believing what, what, in what God has promised you. God told Abraham years ago, leave your mother and your father. Leave all those idols behind and follow me. Follow my direction. I'll take care of you. And then he, after he told him, he said, as far as you can see, north, south, east, and west, he said, I'm going to give it to you. He said, now look down. He said, you see this dust that, 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 that you was wondering if you made the right choice or not? Look down. You see this dust? He said, can a man number the, the grains of this dust? Can a man number the dust of the earth? earth? He said, if they can, then they'll be able to number your seed. Because you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. So what I want to say to us today is this. Let us be careful about the choices that we make. We know what happened to Lot. We know what happened to Lot's wife. Thing, Lot got, like I said, Lot got on the city council. And Lot got down there and started doing what they was doing. And we know what the sodomites did. And God got sick of it. 
I bet you Lot never thought all this beautiful land that God would ever get sick of this. But it wasn't the land, it was the people. God, 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 I had always complained about people. Even before the flood, he said, man's heart is continually on evil. And God sent some angels down there, and he, well, he actually came. Stopped by his friend's house first. Abraham, Abraham said, let me, let me feed you. Let me, why don't you stop and take a rest? He said, let me feed you. Fed him some bread and butter and some fatted calf. Amen. They stayed a long time to get that calf roasted. <laughs> Amen. But he gave them some, fed them up real good. And then God was so pleased with it. He said, well, you know what? He said, I can't hide from my friend what I'm planning on doing. And he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to go down there. I'm going I'm to get rid of him. Now, because Abraham had favor with God, Abraham said, if you just find 50, will you spare him? He said, if I find 50, I'll spare him just for your sake. Abraham said, don't be mad at me, but if you find 40, see, Abraham knew what they was like over there. If you find 40, we can spare him. God said, if I find 40, I'll spare him. Abraham, please be patient with me, but what if you just find 30? He went all the way down to 10. God said, that's enough. He said, that's enough. We know that he wound up sending the angels, and he told them they got Lot out of there. All because of Abraham. It wasn't because of what he did or how good he was. He was on the city council. Well, he went down there and tried to tell, well, the angels told him what the plan was, and he said, I better go warn the people, and they laughed at him. They laughed at him. Why did they laugh? Why? Because he was one of them. Who you, who you, who you, you going to try? You move here. Move in with us, and then you going to try to tell us what to do. They laughed at him. The angel said, you better get out, because we're going to do it. And if you wind up staying, you're going to be caught up with them. That's a lesson, people. Get out when you can. Because if you don't, you get caught up with everybody else. Amen. And you got to suffer the same consequences. Let me show you about what, what was in Lot's wife's heart. They said, don't look back. He didn't tell them the consequences. But he said, get out of here. Keep moving forward. And don't look back. Lot's wife had so much dirt, darkness in her heart, she couldn't stand it. She had to look back. And when she looked back, she turned to a pillar of salt. Now, some people say that's not true. Couldn't possibly be. All things are possible if thou can believe. I read an article some time ago. These people actually believe they found that pillar of salt. No, I don't. I don't. But salt is a preservative. I don't know. But it was in the area. And they was excavating, and they think they found it. That's up to them. I don't know. But now Lot done lost everything he had. Lot went down there so rich he couldn't even stay with his uncle and gained prosperity while he was there. But in the end, he wound up with nothing. 
He wound up disillusioned and with nothing. Him and his daughters went and lived in a cave because they thought they was the last people on earth. Disillusion. That's what happens when you're disobedient and you start doing what you when you get disillusioned. You think everything is the way you think it is. Y'all know I can't go a whole sermon without mentioning it. It's a person in this day and time is so disillusioned. He don't know what's going on. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank God for wisdom. Amen. Now we know what happened in the cave. Amen. So, don't, don't let what happened to Lot happen to you. Let what happened to Abraham happen to you. Abraham still got people to this day. Abraham still is not as large, but he still got the country to this day. Why? Because he stood on God's promises. Amen. Hebrews 11. And one says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's make our choices based on the faith in God's promises. Amen? Amen. God bless you. That's all I have for you. So now, if there's uh, anybody in the building today that has not made the choice to accept God as your personal Savior, don't wait too late. Don't wait until... You think it's the right time. Because that's what a lot of people do. They, well, it ain't time yet. I got some more things that I want to do. Well, you might wind up regretting it. So I'm asking you, if there's anybody in the building today, or anybody that might hear this over the internet, if you haven't, Accept that God as your personal Savior. I ask you to accept him today because we don't know when it's going to be our last time. And so what I want to do is I want everybody to stand. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer for these people. And I want all y'all to be praying in your hearts right along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we stand here today, God, I'm asking you to touch the hearts of the people that not only that have not chosen you, but God, maybe somewhere along the line they got off track. And so, Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to touch their hearts. and God, let them realize that you are God and that you, God, are the one or is the one that can take care of, of all the problems. Not saying, God, that we're not ever going to need for anything anymore. But I'm saying, God, we can trust you. I'm saying, God, that you, you, when you make a promise and you promised us that you would take care of us, that you would supply all our needs, that you would be a shelter in the time of a storm, that you would, be, you would provide water 
when we was thirsty. Lord, you would provide what it, all that we need, bread when we're hungry, healing when we're sick, comfort when we need comforting. God, we know you're able to do all of these things. And so, Heavenly Father, today I'm asking you to touch these people's hearts and turn it towards you that they might live. Lord, like we established last week, be obedient and live. Be disobedient and suffer the consequences. And so, Heavenly Father, today, I just ask you to touch their hearts. Let them realize who you are and what you can do. Who glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm believing that somebody been touched. Hey, glory. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody somewhere don't know who it is. But somebody somewhere found the Lord. The Lord, forgive them of their sins and accept them into you, into the family of God. Lord, let them realize that Jesus died for us and that he holds the key, God, all the keys of death and healing. And he can't nothing happen unless he say so. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you today. And, God, we love you. And, God, we give you the glory and the honor. And, God, we just pray that you would continue to saving souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, hold on. Don't sit down yet. We're going to go ahead on and pray for the, those that have a prayer for any ailments, any kind of sickness or disease or 